Welcome everyone and thank you for tuning in to hear my trading and market updates. This is Uncle Frank and I'm not a financial advisor, nor is any of the content to be construed as financial advice. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. Please remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed the presentation and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you're alerted when I have new information to share. So now let's get into the latest updates. Hey, welcome back everyone. Uncle Frank has the night off and I'm sitting in for him. This is Grim Carnage and I'm delighted to bring you all the latest headlines to help you prepare for Armageddon. I mean Monday's open. Stock market today, Dow loses nearly 500 points as inflation woes meet an uneasy earning start. Stock stumbled on Friday as the kickoff to earnings season amplified worries over a protracted battle against inflation. The tech-heavy Nasdaq slid 1.6%, while the S&P 500 lost 1.5%, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 1.2%, or just under 500 points. Stocks slumped after an underwhelming showing from the banking sector, the first in a wave of corporate earnings that come after a surprisingly hot consumer price print spooked investors earlier this week. Meanwhile, precious metals gave up some of their shine. Gold rallied above 2400 to hit another fresh record, but settled around 2300 while silver traded at its highest since early 2021. Demand is seen as driven by investors seeking safety amid heightening Middle East tensions, but shunning U.S. government bonds in the face of inflation concerns. At the time of this recording, Friday evening, the global crypto market cap stands at $2.39 trillion, down 8.55% over the past day, while XRP is trading at 0 0.5371, down 11.8%. AMC closed at 265, down 15 cents or 5.36%, but not before setting another 52 week low of 261. My best fill for the day was 267. Put your best fill in the comments if you were bottom nibbling today. Guys, don't get too excited, but an expert has said it looks like Ripple and the SEC may have reached a settlement from the crypto basic popular xrp community member and expert ashley prosper highlights several factors suggesting that the multi-year legal tussle between the sec and ripple has ended in a settlement but this remains speculative ashley prosper made this known in a recent twitter post I can't say that Ripple and the SEC have reached the settlement, but I can say it looks that way. Well, guys, it's time to dust off the VIX again. Stocks stumble as volatility spikes. The S&P 500 had its worst week since October as the fear gauge jumped. From Bloomberg, risk-addicted Wall Street funds are shaken as bad news piles up. After a week of geopolitical tensions and bond volatility, life is getting harder for money managers who are sitting on some of their highest exposure to stocks and credit combined in a decade. If you're anything like Uncle Frank, you're ready to kick back and watch Wall Street suffer for a change. His retirement funds are in cash on the sidelines. He owns one cryptocurrency, XRP, and one theater stock with three and a half million other idiots that refuse to sell it. Now that they've beaten down our favorite stock so low that we'd rather watch it die than sell, let's review what Wall Street has to deal with over the next coming days. Let's kick it off with a headline from Fortune. Americans fear the end. Economic collapse looms largest on the nation's mind. And then Jamie Dimon said, the U.S. economy is entering the most dangerous time in history. And even the crypto guys at Cryptopolitan are spooked. This might be the global economy's worst decade yet. No, really. The funny thing about AMC is it's not marginable at most brokerage houses. And that was by design. Even though it's a 100-year-old company listed on the New York Stock Exchange, 
Many brokers refuse to let us buy more on margin, averaging down, and that gives a real monumental advantage to whomever is buying their order flow from them, especially if they're short. But it's my hope this strategy backfires because now, since most apes were not permitted to leverage their AMC positions, now they're at less risk of margin calls. They won't be forced to sell their AMC. You see how that worked out? And from CBS tonight, White House on high alert for possible Iran attack against Israel. U.S. moves forces to Middle East to prepare for imminent Iran strike. From CNN, U.S. sees Iran moving military assets, including drones and cruise missiles. And Iran warns the United States to stay out of fight with Israel or face attack on troops. And this can't be good for inflation. U.S. crude oil gains as Israel reportedly prepares for attack by Iran this weekend. We have swans up the ass now, guys, coming in from every direction from the telegraph. Markets brace for oil to hit 100 as Saudis slash production. Meanwhile, here at home, Americans warned of possible coordinated attack on the homeland. The FBI is worried about a potential string of organized attacks on the American homeland similar to the recent attack at the Russian concert hall. FBI Director Christopher Wray testified before Congress on Thursday where he shared the concerns the department has over terrorism within the country. Just this past week, the International Monetary Fund warned risky lending by shadow banks threatens to trigger a new financial crisis. The Washington-based organization said there were systemic risks posed by the $2.1 trillion opaque world of private credit, which has boomed in recent years against a backdrop of record low interest rates. Regulation in this corner of financial markets is relatively lax, and the IMF said a severe economic downturn could quickly expose vulnerabilities. In a severe downturn, credit quality could deteriorate sharply, spurring defaults and significant losses, the IMF said in its latest financial stability report. The impact would be felt beyond just private lenders as a growing share of public and private pension funds are pouring money into these private funds. The IMF's warning comes just weeks after the Bank of England launched a review into financial stability risks posed by private equity. So are we out of the weeds on the commercial real estate crisis that started with Evergrande? We haven't even gotten started. Commercial real estate's in big trouble may have major financial fallout. Commercial real estate trouble could trigger systemic credit crash fund managers say. And from NASDAQ, will the U.S. commercial property meltdown lead to a banking crisis? So what does this look like on a microeconomic level? Let me give you a peek. From the Wall Street Journal, the real estate nightmare unfolding in downtown St. Louis. The office district is empty with boarded up towers copper thieves and failing retail even the panera outlet shut down the city is desperately trying to reverse the doom loop expect more of this in every major city and over on the brick scene china and russia announced major partnership china and russia announced plans to reform the u.s-led financial system BRICS driving gold and silver breakout? That's a question. And from Watcher Guru, China drives gold price up by buying supply. Now, this is not an endorsement, but you lefties are really going to miss the mean tweets after you see what happens if the U.S. dollar loses its world reserve currency status. I warned you. Meanwhile, in the AMC world, everything is all roses with the exception of the stock price. From Deadline, 2024 global box office projections revised upwards 
by analysts. Following a slightly stronger than projected first quarter at the international box office, and with some titles added to the release calendar later in the year, Gower Street Analytics has increased its global and domestic projections for 2024. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is coming out. And Adam Aaron said bankruptcy is off the table. Hey, maybe all you Adam Aaron cucks can email him to do another reverse stock split. You support all his decisions, right? He's on our side, right? You must have enjoyed the first stock split we did for no good reason. Will you still support him if he reverse splits the stock again? Weren't we supposed to get a MOAS when we avoided bankruptcy the first time? Were we supposed to get a MOAS when we destroyed the short narrative of bankruptcy? We've got, what, over $800 million in checking, and the CEO is saying there's no chance of bankruptcy. We've destroyed the short narrative. Where's our MOAS? We're, we're making new 52-week lows. Weren't we supposed to get a MOAS when we returned to profitability? Well, we just had the best third quarter in our, in our company's entire history last year, and that includes pre-pandemic. Weren't we supposed to get a MOAS when the reverse split and connected QSIP change was completed? Who pushed that narrative? What some apes refuse to admit is the ape, its conversion, the reverse split, was planned in our boardroom by short sellers for short sellers. That's what Wall Street needed. And Adam from Apollo, Derek from City, and Phil from Morgan Stanley shoved it down our throats with a little help from Antara. Now we have our short sellers distributing our shares per Adam's dilution plan to short sellers of our stock. Yeah, keep cheering this, keep cheering this degenerate on. Are you Adam Aaron fanboys so ignorant of investment banking strategies that you don't even know? We didn't have to give Ape away for free as a dividend. We could have sold our preferred shares to the public, and the apes would have gobbled it up. Here's one from two weeks ago. Eagle Point Income Company prices offering of preferred stock. Eagle Point, the company, today announced that it has priced its underwritten public offering of 1.22 million shares of its 8% Series C term preferred stock due 2029 at a public offering price of $25 per share. We could have made our ape convertible into AMC at higher prices. We could have offered other securities that raise money like, you know, A and B warrants. Instead, we're turning our stock into a zombie company and some of you people keep cheering this man on. Now, in my opinion, our only chance to win is if Wall Street loses. We need a swan event, one that collapses the leverage chains of our enemies, one that forces the prime brokers to demand liquidity from the hedgies that they don't have. In other words, margin calls, not investment advice or advisor. And from Variety Box Office, Civil War makes 2.9 million in previews best ever for an a24 movie and then from deadline civil war marching to 23 million plus opening a record for a24 friday p.m box office you know movies in the theaters stubbornly keep making records don't they followers of this channel know that morgan stanley's wealth arm is under probe and investigation by multiple regulators according to the wall street journal what you may not know is the guy from morgan stanley institutional trading that got caught giving front-running tips to citadel and Koss. you know he got banned from the industry for one year guess what he just got a job on wall street from bloomberg bard morgan stanley banker joins firm that got his trading leaks. SEC banned Pawan Posse from industry for one year in January. Koss Capital's new status allows him to overcome the industry ban. There you go, you see how that works? Fortunately for us, we have a lot of stupid apes that actually enjoy the fact that another Morgan Stanley institutional trading executive runs our board of directors with Adam Aaron. You people have to snap out of it. 
Does anyone else find it odd that news of this nature is dropped on a Saturday morning just before the income tax deadline? Barclays Capital agrees to pay $700,000 fine for alleged violations of FINRA rules. All right, what'd they do, Uncle Frank? In particular, Barclays failed to timely or reasonably monitor its research analysts' managed brokerage accounts for compliance with trading restrictions on equity research analysts or to determine if they held securities in companies they covered. As a result, the firm failed to identify and did not disclose in 99 equity research reports that analysts held securities of a covered company and did not discover three instances in which an analyst's external account manager traded in a manner inconsistent with the analyst's most recently published recommendation on a company. Did you get all that? I know it was a mouthful. Now, from at least April 2021, through March of 2022, we remember those days, the firm called to obtain data for certain clients of Barclays affiliates to determine whether it needed to disclose spe uh, specified conflicts of interest in its research reports. As a result, the firm failed to disclose in at least 803 reports covering 22 issuers that an affiliate had received non-investment banking related compensation from the issuer within the prior 12 months. So, you know, you need to talk about that. Guys, I don't like it, it stinks. I would not be surprised if AMC were some of the stocks covered here, they won't say. But remember this, Adam chose City, our chief investment banker and short seller of AMC, and Barclays, a short seller of AMC, and Goldman Sachs, a short seller and spoofing king of AMC, to distribute our stock to short sellers of AMC. That could be going on right now. This is all a part of Adam's constant dilution plan at record low prices, while we have over 800 million in checking, according to him, no bankruptcy risk, and all of the box office expectations have been revised upward. So do we have to do it this way? Of course not. But I wonder why you support it. And we might as well keep an eye on our old enemies, Credit Suisse and UBS. From Bloomberg, UBS fears in Switzerland are realized. From Yahoo, UBS could need 10, 15 billion in extra capital to meet new Swiss rules, analyst says. Wall Street Journal, Switzerland moves to hike UBS capital requirements. And from Fortune, after Credit Suisse collapse, Switzerland is now revamping its financial rule book. Yeah, they always do it after after the disaster, right? Now guys, don't forget this Bitcoin halving event could happen this coming week. I'm excited by anything that can freak out or shock our enemies from nice hash. Do you know why they do this? According to them, conventional fiat currencies are subject to inflation due to the ability of governments or banks to increase the money supply. Well, we're all experts on that in the United States. Unlike these currencies, Bitcoin has a cap total supply of 21 million BTC, meaning no additional coins can be created beyond this limit. This finite supply, alongside potential changes in demand as more people adopt Bitcoin, positions it similarly to gold, a resource with a limited supply that cannot be artificially increased. Let's be looking out for this. So let's wrap this episode with a look forward. From Yahoo Finance, earnings season is the market rally's next test. Well, that and $100 oil, persistent inflation, all-out war in the Middle East, the war in Ukraine, an impending commercial real estate crisis, the 10-year bond yield, terrorism within our borders, China and Russia partnering up against our currency, China's economy and their designs on Taiwan, a trillion bug cicada march through my backyard, shadow bank lending risks, reverse repo operations, the implementation of the CAT system, the Bitcoin halving, it's an election year, and on and on. You see, I told you guys, our enemies have a lot more to deal with than we do. 
right? So Wall Street expects earnings to keep zooming ahead. Whether they do could determine the fate of the market's 2024 surge. So Wall Street expects earnings to grow. Consensus sees companies reporting a third straight quarter of earnings growth in Q1 and a positive outlook for the year. Strong quarterly earnings could push stocks higher. Market bulls are encouraged by limited signs that high interest rates are, sh are slowing corporate earnings and U.S. economic growth. But uncertainties lie ahead. Yeah, I'd say so. Big banks kicked off earnings season on Friday. Their results highlighted the risks of elevated interest rates and geopolitical tensions. Guys, so if the hedgies are short and we get a huge rally, I'll be happy. For example, if the Ukraine war were to suddenly wrap and they went to peace talks and the market rallied, the hedgies are screwed. I will be rooting for exactly, exactly the opposite of what the hedge funds are. Stay tuned. Hey, I want to thank you for watching and please remember to hit the like button after this slide if you enjoyed the presentation. Subscribe to the channel and set the alert so you're notified when I have new information to share. See you at the bell.